So one of the biggest reasons why standing seam metal roofing is so expensive is to the high labor cost of the actual installation of standing seam. It's very labor intensive. Um, if you've received a quote recently that has knocked you off of your feet, and this is the reason why I've made this video series is to help you save some money and at the same time get the standing seam metal roof you've always wanted. Let's get up onto the roof and let's get started. So welcome to part two in a five part series where we're going to be installing a standing seam metal roof on a very basic level style building. It's a gable to gable roof. So that means basically two rectangles with a ridge in the middle. If you haven't watched the episode before this one, I strongly recommend that you go back and watch if you plan on doing a full install by yourself. But I assure you by the end of this series, you will be able to successfully complete a standing seam metal roof install on uh, a gable to gable roof. Having said that, let's hop onto the roof and uh, let's get some measurements and marks so we can get started with our gable trim. One other thing before we get started, for tools, I'm going to put Amazon Buy Guide. It's in the description down below and everything that we use in this install, you can get on Amazon. Um, it's going to cost you somewhere between two and three hundred dollars for the tools, but still, if you're looking at saving money, this is the way to do it. And those tools, you can use them forever and ever. Um, so uh, head down in the description and go ahead and download that Amazon buy guide. And uh, we do receive an affiliate commission, full transparency, just so you guys know. We're just here to help you guys out and make things easier for you. All right, let's hop up on the roof. Before we begin, we have to make sure that there are no protruding nails, screws, etc., as this would prevent the trim from seating properly on the roof edge. Bang in or pull out any nails or staples you may see that would cause this problem. We also have to prepare the drip edges for installation as well. Much like the notching pattern in part one of this series. Let me show you how. Pro tip, when installing trim on a gable edge, it's good practice to start with a full length coming off the bottom corner rather than coming down from the peak. The finished look is much better and will result in a smaller piece being installed at the top rather than at the bottom. Now, let the trim hang over the bottom edge like this. You can either hold it with your hand or tack it with a screw for now to hold it before we move on to the next step. Once you have the trim sitting where you need it, the mark for our miter can be made by letting your pencil run along the face of the eave trim. Be sure to also mark the kick of the drip edge as well. It should look something like this when you're done. Now we can release the tack screw and remove the piece before we start making cuts. Now is when we add a tab allowance to our miter line. I like a 3 8 of an inch tab. It's not clunky looking, but it also is big enough to be effective. Once you're done, it should look something like this. Now that our allowance has been added, we can start cutting. Start cutting from the drip edge side of the trim inward, cutting towards the top of the trim on our 3 8 of an inch allowance line. As we approach the end of the cut, we are going to angle our snips. Now spin the trim over to expose the panel hook. This is the one inch lip that I am referring to. We have to now make a cut straight across this one inch lip and stop at the previous cut we just made. After that notch is made, spin the trim once more and cut across the top of the trim, connecting to the last cut that was made. You can now remove this scrap piece. We're almost there. Remember back when I said, make sure you mark the kick out of the drip edge when marking the miter line. Well, this is the reason why. So what we have to do is cut along the drip edge line and stop at the bend in the line. Make an opposing notch across the 3 8 tab, connecting the end of the last cut 
and remove this small little piece of scrap. Now, last but not least, the last part of notching out this miter is here at the drip edge. Let's make a straight line going across to that original miter line. Once you have this line, cut this bottom corner of the drip edge all the way across, completing the notching for this detail. Now for the moment you've been waiting for, get out your pair of folders now, get them out and grab the 3 8 tab and bend it at 90 degrees. Pro tip, for the miter to seat nicely against the opposing eave trim, I like to do what I call take some of the bend out of the mitered end of the gable trim. This little trick will tighten up your miter and make things look really nice and professional. Something you'll be happy every time you look up and admire your own work. Also, since this is a very highly visible miter, it's definitely something you're gonna wanna consider doing. Now that you got your miter looking nice, while holding the piece in place, get a screw about six inches up from the bottom. Once you have done that, the piece should stay in place, preventing your miter from separating and ruining all that hard work you've just done. You can now proceed and install the remaining screws going up the gable, spacing them no more than 20 inches apart. The rule, more is better, definitely applies here. And as for the ends of the trims, try and stay within six to eight inches. Now let's place the trim where it will live and mark the underside along the ridge and along the face like so. Pull the trim off and cut along the lines you just made all the way across the top and cut the one inch nose to connect the last cut you just made. Now for the last cut, follow the line you made along the face and remove this excess piece of scrap. Once that final cut is made, the piece should drop right into place, preparing things for a nicely finished miter. After repeating step two and making your way up the opposing gable, you will run into what I call the finishing peak miter situation. You will need to measure for this step Get your tape out and measure from the one inch notch up to the peak of the opposing side. Place the piece where it will live. It is not necessary to hook it on, just to lay it over for now while we get our marks. You're now going to look over the edge at the peak miter. Make sure you're tied off when you do this step. Things look a little complicated, but I assure you we can get through this together. If you look closely at where the drip edges cross, where they intersect is where we are going to make our mark. Not just on one piece, but on both pieces. With the pieces being in place while we are making our marks, the miter itself will line up perfectly when we go to install them. Now that the lines are made, remove the piece. The first cut we're going to make is on the opposing gable trim. All we are going to do is cut off the drip edge portion, leaving the rest that will act as our underlapping allowance to finish the miter to perfection. We're almost done, I promise. The piece that was removed has a mark on it. Remember, the mark is to be connected to the top corner like so. This gives us our finished miter line. Once you've made this line, cut along it and remove the scrap. Now that we have all the preparation done to our pieces of trim, install the last piece while properly hooking everything together to finish off this wonderful trim detail I call the gable trim deed. If you're getting value, all I ask is that you subscribe to the channel and like this video before moving on to the next section. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. To continue on to step three, tap the video on screen right now and I will see you over there.